Ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the symposium 4 under the topic of travel medicine. And this session will be moderated by Mr. Pontep Chantafanich from Mahidol University. Pontep Chantafanich is an associate professor at the Department of Tropical Pediatrics, Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Mahidol University. He graduated in medicine from Siruraj Medical School, Mahidol University. He holds postgraduate qualification in TTMNH Bangkok, MSCMCH London, and DTCH Liverpool, Diploma Type Board of Pediatric Infectious Diseases, Diploma Type Board of Preventive Medicine in Travel Medicine. He was previously head of Department of Tropical Pediatrics, Deputy Director of Hospital for Tropical Diseases Bangkok, and Deputy Dean of Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Mahidol University. He is now the president of Thai Society of Travel Medicine, immediate past president of Asia Pacific Travel Health Society, secretary general of Asian Society for Pediatric Infectious Diseases, treasurer of International Society of Tropical Pediatrics. His research interests have been in travel medicine, vaccines, tropical medicine, and infectious diseases. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give the time to our moderator. Please, the time is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm very pleased, even though I'm not in Yogyakarta. Good morning to everyone. Selamat pagi. Welcome to the uh, Travel Medicine Symposium. The Travel and tourism sector was one of the hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. It is severely affected by shutdowns, travel restriction, and the disappearance of international travel. Now it's better. So we are delighted that many countries announced that COVID-19 is an endemic diseases. Therefore, the demand for travel is coming back. The demand is strong in North America and Europe, but slowly increase in Asia Pacific region. This symposium will discuss about travel and COVID. What happened? And what is the future? What is now and the future? And whether the type or an activities of travel that may change because of COVID. So uh, uh, our uh, first speaker. Associate Professor Wachalapong Piyapani is the Director of Hospital for Tropical Diseases. He is also the Head of Travel Medicine Research Unit, Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Mahidon University. He has been working in the field of tropical medicine for more than 17 years. He has got Diploma of Thai Board of Internal Medicine, Diploma Thai Board of Travel Medicine, Diploma of Travel Medicine from the Loyal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, United Kingdom. He is the co-founder of the Only One Residency Training Program in Travel Medicine and also the site director of Geo Sentinel Surveillance Network of International Society of Travel Medicine and CDC USA based in Bangkok. He is actively participate in academic activities in DTMNH and MCTM residency training program and take care of patients and travelers at travel clinic and also at hospital for tropical diseases in Bangkok. His mainly research are on tropical and travel medicine with more than 50 published papers listed in PubMed. 
professor was wrong you give a talk on post pandemic failing uh, professor was wrong please i think he has the video kindly turn on this video please Good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to this special con international conference in Indonesia. My name is Dr. Vachara Pongbiyapani. I'm from the Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Mahindo University. Today, I will give you some idea about the post-pandemic traveling. But before going to the post-pandemic, I will give you some overview of the travel medicine before pandemic in order to give you some idea to really understand about travel medicine in general. Okay, I have no conflict of interest to declare. Okay, I will give you some idea into eight points. The first one, we always travel to our, our history. You can see that right now we live in a very small world. I'm now in Thailand, but you are in Indonesia, but we talk to each other very easy. And right now we can fly or cross the world really easy. So travel medicine is something to do when we travel. And in fact, we travel to our, our human history in the old day. You can see that, okay, we travel because we want to have the new resources, new land, or travel for the curiosity, or escape by the outbreak or war, or travel for trade, something like that. But right now, nowadays, Travel, in fact, has been always risky. The left-hand side, uh, Dr. David Livingstone, who get attacked by the, end, the lion. You can see there the, the risk in the old day. In the middle photo, middle image, is the sea sickness. On the right-hand side, is the, uh, the former president, former U.S. president, Theodore Roosevelt. He acquired uh, malaria from Brazil. You can see that even the U.S. president still get malaria from Brazil. If they sit in the White House in the Washington D.C., they will never get. He will never get malaria. So you can see that travel will be be risky. Nowadays, we have many tourists all around the world. In Southeast Asia, we can see this type of travel backpacker travel in 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 Southeast Asia for vacation, for take a trip, like the elephant like this. So they have some risk so that they may, may get dengue or malaria or have diarrhea or monkey bite or whatsoever. These are the risk of the backpacker. Not only the backpacker, we do have the package tourists like this. Right? Or even the missionary tourists like this. You can imagine that, okay, one type of traveler may have some, some risk. Diarrhea may be more likely to occur in the backpacker when compared to the to the well prepared food less along whatsoever right so these are the common nowadays travelers but what is the travel medicine travel medicine is something to do that we want to make the traveler safe right so we make them to be well prepared because when we have when we travel we always have the risk if we travel, let's say, to, 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 to Africa, we can acquire yellow fever. So travel medicine doctor will give the yellow fever vaccine before the trip. That means, okay, we reduce the risk to get yellow fever. We may inform them about the malaria prophylaxis for Africa. Not only, only the infection diseases. Travel medicine has something to do with the people with the existing disease. Some ad in my travel clinic, someone may ask me that, Doctor, I have asthma, COPD, but I would like to go to the Everest Base Camp. Can I go? So you can see that as a travel medicine doctor, we need to inform the traveler or assess and to give some recommendation in order to minimize the risk. Not only the risk of the travel, the risk of the not only the risk of the infection diseases, the risk of exacerbation of its disease accident 
or psychological problem during the trip is also something to do with the travel medicine. So this is the classic dengue lash in German travelers. And this picture shows two Thai work in Jambu, Nigeria, and then acquired malaria from Nigeria to Thailand. You can see this is the risk of the terror when they travel abroad. So, terror machine doctor want to prepare everyone before they go to everywhere in the world. Such as if you like to go to Nigeria, we give them the yellow fever, do the yellow fever, malaria prophylaxis, hepatitis A or tetanus whatsoever in order to to prepare. Right? People always have the disease always have We live, we are the doctor from Asia. We need to know, let's say, virtually from all the disease all around the world. So you can see this picture. Do you know what it is? This is the Gilly Chinese Lichmaniasis. Lichmaniasis. She is a US researcher work in the Y work in the wildlife field in the forest in Peru. He, she got bitten by the sand fly and acquired the Sakilishan Lydid, but see for the treatment in Thailand. You can see the US researcher acquired the disease in Peru, but tried to get the, disease, the, the treatment in Thailand. So you can see the world is small and small. But someone may acquire, may get bitten by this thing, and get a leak, like a leak, like this is the lab disease. We do not have lab disease in the Asia, but okay, we do have our Asian people go to Europe and the US can get the lab disease when they travel trekking like this, this is in Scotland. So we need to prepare them before they go. So the key message number three today is the traveler should be well informed and well prepared. We, done, we have done the research in Kaosan Road in the backpacker area. You can see the Westerner riders, 20 to 60 percent of them visit the doctor before the trip. They know dengue, they know malaria for the trip, and they know how to prevent. But okay, let's compare to our Asian travelers. How many percent of Thai or how many percent of Indonesian people come to see you as a doctor before they take a trip? Where do you feel like? Because travel medicine is not so popular in, in Asia. Anyway, we, as a travel team doctor, we will prepare them because we have the tool to, to keep, to assess the risk and to give them the health education. We have several tools in our hand. We can give them the health education, vaccine, chemoprophylaxis, standby treatment, or give them some some preventive measure in order to minimize the risk. These are our tools. Anyway, education is much more important. Much more important. Because if we, we know what we do, or we, we know how to repair, we can minimize the risk significantly. Let's see this example. These are common suffering trip. Last few years, I have the, 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 the patient come to see me at the clinic and say that, Doctor, I and my two years old son just returned from Tanzania and get bitten by this fly. Do you know what it is? It is a sexy fly, but sucking fly. And it can have with African sleeping sickness. African sleeping sickness is not exit in Asia, but it do exit in Africa, it's celiac disease. You can see this is the blasphemy. You can see the protozoa, Tipanosoma here. And for the Fresomia, you can see this clip. If you look at the clip carefully, you can see the protozoa. You can see here. This disease is serious and also fatal. We don't want someone to acquire the African Tipanosomasis because it's difficult to to give the treatment, the treatment is toxic as well. So the best way to prevent, but the question is how can we prevent specify bite? Okay, is it one duty of travel medicine doctor? We inform them that okay, specify. You need to wear the long sleeve shirt, 
and wear proper color of your clothes. One key message that we always give to the traveler who like to go to South Philly is do not wear something in blue, blue color. Why? Because you can see that this picture, you can see specify love blue color. If you put the blue tag like this or flag like this or someone wear the blue jacket like this, specify will come and buy someone. So do not wear something in blue. If you don't do what, not want to get bitten by specify. So they which color that they should wear? They should wear the earth tone color, right? Similar to the environment, similar to the elephant, similar to the cloud, similar to the tree like this. Do not wear something in blue or even the red like this, the bright color like this is not good. So should wear something look like the earth tone color. Right? So this is just a small piece of information that we need to inform, right? In order to minimize the risk. Another example. Usually in Asia, we have many dogs, we have many monkeys, like this, as everyone knows. We done some research in, in, in the past among the foreigners who travel in Southeast Asia. Interestingly, the chance for them to get bitten by dog, monkey, or, or man, mammal is quite high, up to 1.1% per month. Interestingly, only 31.1% who of those who were bitten went to the hospital to get the post-surgical treatment. So why? Do they aware of that? Did they aware of the rabies? Not really. You can see we give them some question and ask them that, okay, some easy question. So then you may get rabies if you get, if you are licked by the infected animal or the broken skin, yes or no? In fact, yes. But okay, only 40% understand that you can get lady by leak. Right? Or cat can transmit lady as well. This is true. But you can see only half of them know that cat transmit lady. Or the bio the healthy looking cat and dog and cat post no little lady. In fact, it's false. But you can see other 40% still believe that if the healthy looking cat or dog by you, you have no risk. Is it a misunderstood, misunderstanding here? Yeah. So this is why when we see the traveler before their trip, we as a traveler team doctor need to inform them, make them aware. Such as if someone will go to the LLS, we make them to aware of the high altitude sickness to prepare, right? To minimize the risk. This is the concept of the classical travel medicine. So this is what we work in the travel clinic like this. So what happening when we have a pandemic? Point number four. In fact, COVID-19 pandemic is the first time in the history that we, we, we saw the tourism crash. Right? Before the pandemic, more than 3 million people travel internationally in one day. The trend of the tourism increased like this. But OK, this, is the, this was the first time that okay, the, 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 the tourism collapse, empty beach, and you can see the lockdown or the travel restriction. Uh, this, although we expect to have some return of the internet, international traveler, but it's still not come back to, to the pre-pandemic. Anyway, we learned a lot during the COVID-19 pandemic. I think the second speaker, Dr. Wasin, my colleague, will share you some idea. What, what, what we have learned? During the pandemic, we know that social distance is important during the pandemic. We know the mask, right? This is the public show that the research about the efficacy of mask, face mask to prevent COVID. As a lot of people work in this area. And right now we have a very good evidence that okay to show that mask, wearing the face mask can reduce the transmission of the COVID-19. Before that, you can see before that, someone say, yes, you should wear the mask. Someone say, no, you should not wear the mask. But like now, pandemic teach us that, okay, mask is effective. Okay, after pandemic, we saw the new way of the tourism emerging. 
Okay, in the old day, when we would like to see the sunset like this, we need to go there, like among the crowded people to see the sunset like this. This is in the Santorini. But nowadays, if you like to explain the sunset, there's no need to go there. You can just go to the website and book a virtual tour from your home. You just call them and they can use the Google Meet or Zoom with the guide. Like, and they will show you virtually from your home. Like, or in fact, you can look at the YouTube to see the sunset in Santorini today. Like, and you can see panorama or 3D view virtually everywhere in the world. This is what we call the virtual tour. tour. The question is whether this is, will be replaced the classical tower, tower or not. Not really. Anyway, you can see this photo, this picture. This man, what, what did they do? Or this, what did they do? They do what they call the virtual, virtual Everest Base Camp Challenge. There's no need to go to the Everest Base Camp. You just download the, go to this website and download the app and pay 30 US dollar and walk in your holes. Walk in your garden, something like that, and you will experience virtually. Look at your app and imagine that okay, you are in the base camp, something like that. So you can go to Machu Picchu virtually. You can do virtually everywhere all the world virtually. These are the new kind of the tourism. But okay, it's difficult to, you know, it's difficult to replace the classical travel. Anyway, this is an attempt. But okay, there are always the new risks in for the travel. Such as you can see, this is the bar. This bar car is the number of people who die during 2014, 15, 20, 21, something like that. Can you guess which health problem or what, what, why they die? This uh, this map shows the distribution of the people who die from the new terror related death. What is it? Definitely it's not malaria. <laughs> like because even malaria, you can see a lot of dot in Africa. But okay, this dot one red spread throughout the world. So the answer is this. These three girls get hit by the train when they selfie themselves like this, right? And, and the train, you can see the light come back and hit them, or them die. Not only this, but okay, this new is a French tourist die after trying to take the selfie at Thai waterfall. Unfortunately, this research published in the journal Travel Medicine here, you can see in the 13 years, 300 people die while taking a selfie. You can compare to malaria during the 13 years as well. Only 12 days, but you can see the selfie 300 days is much more than in classical travel malaria here. Recently in the Halloween, you can see we, we, we heard the, the tragedy in the South Korea from the Halloween. Many people crowded and died. So when we're talking about the risk, so we as a travel agency, not only we need to aware the new risk as well. Like not only the infectious diseases, we need to include the non-infectious diseases as well, maybe the selfie date or even the cyber security date. The cyber security list not, not, not dead. Okay, the last point is uh, unless human nature change, travel agency will become more and more important in the future. Like, so how can we gain the knowledge? We need to lead, practice, hear this. Uh, in this picture show in our travel clinic, we teach resident foreign doctor here. And the conclusion is travel medicine is dynamic. Post right? travel and list of the chain and list assessment is art and science cannot be replaced by the AI. Anyway, we cannot ignore the, the important of the AI. Turn out, okay, this article just published recently with Professor Jola, the AI and travel medicine. You're welcome to read it. And travel medicine doctor should be learned 
a lot and keep, always keep learning. We need to learn and learn and relearn. Because the world, how many it seems, is the world. The world is smaller and smaller. So how many will become more and more important in the future? Maybe we can travel as in the metaverse like this. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, we leave the question at the end of the section. Uh, a second speaker, uh, assistant professor Wasin Messi. He is head of Thai Tarot Clinic, hospital for tropical diseases, uh, faculty of tropical medicine, Mahidon University. He provides care to patients and travelers with tropical and infectious diseases and also uh, travel related or travel acquired illness at travel clinic and also uh, take care of the patient at the hospital for uh, tropical diseases. His list of interest is involved in travel medicine travel related diseases and clinical tropical medicine. He will give a talk on anticipating global impact on travel medicine. Lesson learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Wasin, please. He has the video. Can he turn on his video? Good morning, delegates and the committees. And first of all, I would like to thank you, organizing committee, to invite me to talk today. So my talk today is in the travel medicine sessions, we'll talk about anticipating global impact of travel medicine, lesson learned from COVID-19 pandemic. And as you may know, COVID-19 pandemic impact us a lot, especially travel medicine specialists because of the preventive measures around the world and travel restrictions. So my talk have no conflict of interest for these presentations. And I will focus in two, two points, which are where are we now and what's next for the travel medicines. So where are we now? As you may know, if you look at the continuum of pandemic phases, we are coming to the recovery phases. And during the transitional phases, they have a lots of uh, uh, implemented new uh, preventive measures, such as the ease, travel restrictions, and also uh, masking is not mandated anymore. So it's still on the uh, transitional phase to recovery phase. And also with the uh, trends of the new cases globally, uh, so far, I think around 620 million cases around the world. And if you look at the trend of the uh, new cases, it's decreasing, which is, which is a good news. And because of many, many factors, especially uh, vaccinations, uh, roll out and coverage around the world. So uh, COVID-19 is a clear picture that the disease can cause international uh, spreading by the travelers. And as you may know, uh, when the COVID-19 first identified in China in, in 2019, after that three months, it's declared a pandemic, which is quite quick because of the uh, internal spreading by the travelers. So one editorial in the Journal of Travel Medicines said that travelers give wings to novel coronavirus. And, of, and 
of course, travelers play an important role for international spreading, not just only COVID-19. However, in the new emerging diseases in the future, especially human-to-human -human, uh, transmissions like respiratory virus can cause the international spreading quite quick because of the increasing number of the uh, travelers around the world. So, of course, if you look at the, uh, the data for the international tourist arrival in 2020, after we declared the pandemic, and we found that because of the uh, worldwide uh, lockdown and travel restrictions caused the abrupt decreasing of international tourist arrival around the world, which is, I think I could say, uh, this is the first time in our uh, history that we uh, restrict air travel around the world and cause the uh, decreasing of international travel. So this is an epic photos in Thailand. This is Khao San Road on the left-hand side. Uh, where it's very one of the most popular area in Bangkok, which is empty of travelers during the COVID-19 lockdown. And also uh, on the right-hand side, many, many tourist destinations around the world has empty with travelers. So it's ruined our tourism sector and business around the world as well. And of course, if we ask that which medicine specialties impact from COVID-19 pandemic, I could say that travel medicine specialists because we're dealing with, with the travelers. So that's why during the COVID-19 uh, lockdown, our cases visited in our clinic abruptly decreasing. I could say in April to 2020, we have less than 100 cases per month, which is quite an uh, emergency for us because we, we have to work with the travelers, but there's no patients in the clinic. And not just only Thailand, the surveys around the world of the travel medicine practice during COVID-19 among ISTM members. So they found that around 70% actively engaged However, uh, most of the practice uh, related to COVID-19. And around 20% they change to other area of clinical activities and around 30% redeploy to other area of healthcare. And 1% leave travel medicine practice to do another job. And as, as I told you, most of the practice during COVID-19 is the COVID-19 test and screening. But if you look at it now, data is that although they have the increasing number of international tourists arrival around the world, however, it's not uh, as the same just before pandemic. How, but it's the trend is increasing. If you look at the green, the green uh, colors lines here for the first half years of 2022, the increased number of international tourist arrival has increasing and I think it will continue increasing. However, it's still less than in uh, 2019. But this is a good sign for the travel and tourism sector because of uh, the uh, many countries, uh, they have the uh, full uh, vaccine coverage and also the uh, is the travel restrictions and also most of the new variants has very mild uh, diseases. However, they still uh, have the high severity in some group of population as well. And also in Asia Pacific, if you look at the green colors here, it is very uh, good size that's increasing number of the travelers. And this photo has been taken, I mean, two days ago at Bangkok International Airport in October 2022. You have seen that 
they have a lots of travelers visiting here in Bangkok airport, and also it's crowded of people uh, try to uh, uh, traveling uh, during this recovery. Uh, some some people they call uh, the revenge travel after they has been locked down for almost two or three years. So so they are hungry with travel. So that's why. Uh, we have seen the crowded people in many popular destinations, and this is one of, as I told you, in Khao San Road during Halloween uh, last week, and you see uh, it's crowded of travelers uh, in 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 that area as well compared with uh, two or three years ago at the beginning of the pandemic. So this is a good sign of tourism and to our business sector around the uh, tourist destinations. And also, uh, this is the number of cases which visit us in the travel clinic uh, pre-pandemic and this year. is a good sign as well that the number of travelers are uh, increasing visited here. And most of them are comes from the pre-travel consultations, which is reflect that uh, travelers becomes uh, common and popular again after a pandemic. And we did some study about COVID-19 vaccine acceptance among international travelers, and we found that this is very good because we found that most of the travelers accepted to COVID-19 vaccine, I could say more than 90%, they usually accepted for COVID-19 vaccine because of many, many factors. One thing is that some country, I mean, previously some country, they require to show the proof of vaccinations before getting the countries. And sometimes they require to get testing before getting to the country as well. So that's why uh, most of the travelers uh, visit, uh, they, they, request or they accept to get COVID-19 vaccine. So this is what we have now. So what's next after the uh, pandemic? So I think I think most of us may know about VUCA. Many, many people usually say about we are living in a VUCA world. What a VUCA means? Because a COVID-19 impact in many, many sectors, not just only tourism, economy, politicals, and, and many, many sectors, and they are uh, quite uncertain in some circumstances. So what a VUCA world means? Volatility, uncertainty, complexities, and ambiguities. We know that, okay, after COVID-19 and, and and, and now we are facing with uh, the situation with uh, volatilities, uncertainties, complexity, ambiguity. So like COVID-19, we don't know. I mean, at the beginning of COVID-19, we don't know what to deal with. We don't know what's the vaccines and the vaccine can develop within one year or whatever. So all of this is, is very important things on and not just only uh, leaders, but for us as well to prepare ourselves for VUCA worlds in the futures. So COVID-19 protections may remain ongoing in travel medicine practice. Although many countries are eats for uh, travel restrictions and uh, some measures is not mandated anymore. Like if you are going to uh, the... Uh, uh, the countries of destinations where the healthcare is resorts uh, poor uh, in many parts of the world. And, you know, uh, many countries, the epidemiologies and the vaccine coverage is, in, is different among the country as well. And as I told you, although we know that the new variants is not called the severe diseases, but however, in some groups of populations like elderly or immunocompromised, they may have the uh, severe uh, consequence of the disease. And also, uh, it's quite clear that complete eliminations of the virus is not occur anymore because we can, we have to live with that 
uh, with COVID-19. And what a challenge after reopen tourism is that the new approach in pre-travel consultations. As I told you, uh, pre-travel consultation, the classic pre-travel consultation is still uh, a standardized in our practice. You have to do the uh, traveler's personal risk assessment, not just only the uh, disease in that destinations, but also the risk stratification for COVID-19 during that travel as well. Also trip bed determinations and also the policies, including health insurance, employer mandate or government regulations during uh, the travel in that countries. I think many countries at the moment, uh, they, uh, uh, at the moment, they have the self taste of COVID-19 as well. And, you know, uh, sometimes they have the symptoms during the travel and they taste themselves and they self isolate themselves, which is good. Some can have the challenge. Uh, issue is that the uh, antiviral, uh, standby antiviral carrying during travel is necessary or not is still debated as, as well. For example, if you carry some uh, antivirus during travel and you got COVID and you take it during travel without any uh, seeking for healthcare facilities to debate. For, and also, as I told you, we are in VUCA world. So preparing for the next emerging infectious disease is the important thing. So as I told you, uh, travel medicine physicians is ready to adapt with the new situations, with the uh, new emerging infectious disease, and also the behavior of the traveler is also changed, especially uh, the travelers may travel and also they work as well. We call the work remotely during the travel. They may stay in the long trips, the travelers behavior, they may concerns about the new emerging diseases and also the uh, technologies and the uh, applications or artificial intelligence in the practice in the clinic or even involved with the traveler's behavior is one of the roads in, in, in the futures or not, I think not in the futures, but but now is is coming, and uh, uh, the pandemic may uniquely affect. I think, as I told you, COVID nineteen may not cause the severe disease in the uh, healthy people, but also in some specific group of travelers like elderly and immunocompromised. So, what's the new role for travel medicine in future? Is that we have to know about the uh, help the people to resume. Uh, safe travel or planning uh, their travel. As I told you, we have to maybe discuss about the self-taste carrying or sometimes in the high-risk group of populations may discuss about carrying the antivirals during travel as well, especially in the destinations where resource is poor. And we have to understand how and when infections are transmitted and epidemiologies of the uh, each countries and offer some choices in worst case scenario for travelers as well. And we have to have some experience about the interpreting uh, serologies and as administrating vaccines. And also uh, we have to understand and prepare the new emerging diseases. So, uh, previously, as I told you, COVID-19 can impact to other travel-related diseases, like they have the uh, report that they have increased risks of severe malaria in returning travelers during COVID-19 because they focus in a lot of COVID-19 cases. So some travel-related uh, diseases like uh, life-threatening disease like malaria might be the uh, coming with the important point that we have to focus in our practice and also the travelers to to understand and uh, prepare for that. And as I told you, 
uh, they have new emerging diseases like monkeypox around two to three months. And how about us? I think in Southeast Asia, as we uh, the one of the important uh, monkeypox spreading is from importations by international uh, travelers. So the question is, what you should know about it, how to prevent it, and if you know about the spreading or if you see the case, what should you do? This is a thing that we have to uh, forecast and we have to prepare ourselves. So as I told you, now travelers can play a are important roles for international spreading. So, so if you look, work in the travel clinic or work in the tourism sector and even in the uh, travel medicine practice, be prepared for that because they may have a new coming diseases that we have faced. So be prepared. So I think I will end my presentations here and thank you very much for your uh, participations and your attentions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Professor Vasin. Uh, the next speaker, our third speaker, and last but not least, uh, Dr. Levina Akasi. Uh, she got her medical doctor from University of Indonesia in 1995 and became become a general practitioner. She took the foundation course on tromycin in Glasgow University, United Kingdom in 2002. She is also the founder of travel medicine uh, of travel and adventure medicine of Asia or in short, is Tamashia Network. She is the executive board counselor member of the Asia Pacific Terror Health Society and affiliate member of Loyal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, United Kingdom. She enjoys traveling both domestic and internationally. She also holds a professional association of diving instructor, or what we call PADI, diving license and adults landscape sightseeing. Her publications are mainly on traumatism. She will give a talk on risk assessment during pre travel consultation for specific population. Please. Could you turn on your mic? Thank you, Prof. Ponte, for the introduction. Good to see you again. Uh, let me finish the share screen. I can't see. Can you see my slides, Prof? Yes, please go on. I can hear you. Well. Okay, thank you. So this is the topic given by the committee. I'm not specifically address the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but it is a topic of a whole meeting. I think of need three days to cover all the uh, specific travelers. This is only uh, selected travelers, epic, to cooperate the elderly and the children. So before before give, giving any travel uh, advice, first we, we should know our client, what type of the traveler, what is his or her is, and is there any specific issue to discuss and manage before traveling. This uh, type of travelers, you have a corporate, you have good group, group travel, you have adventure trip, family holiday, pilgrimage, humanitarian, age workers. There is, uh, there are also many other special group of travelers, like athletes, elderly travelers, from, and down to immunocompromised travelers, military personnel. All these kind of travelers should be addressed specifically before traveling. And there are also special itineraries that need risk assessment 
but it can be any type of travel. That is a cruise ship, diving, extended stay, extreme travel like the, to the polar, to the uh, North Pole maybe, uh, mass gatherings, and also well wilderness or remote regions travel. So after COVID-19 pandemic, it's not over yet, but international travel is now increasing. Preparation for safe travel must be a thorough and include additional considerations compared to the pre-COVID-19 era. So although we have now entering the endemic phase, but we should we don't don't forget for the preparation and precaution. I still recommend to wear masks. So what actually what is risk? Uh, from the dictionary, you can see this. Here the, the first definition is the possibility of suffering harm or loss or uh, briefly it's a danger, risk is a danger. And from the, the other medicine, medical dictionary, it is the probability of developing a given disease. This is the continuum of travel medicine. We are talking for risk assessment, and that is in uh, pre-travel consultation, pre-travel visits. It is done in home country before going, and it is done in the travel medicine clinic. So we are in the first uh, phase. We are not talking about sick tourists or returning travelers with illness. I um, I saw that a lot of participants now is not practitioners of travel medicine, so I would like to emphasize some aspects of travel medicine practice. It is not a curative like conventional medicine. We give promotion and prevention. So the client is not a patient, it is a traveler and mostly are healthy clients. The relationship between doctor and client is informative. We uh, give a discussion, talk together for uh, risk management. So the evaluation is not diagnostic workup, but we give risk or we do risk assessment. So what is the travel related health risk? Basically, it is only infectious disease or non-infectious disease. But we are talking um, maybe in the conference is tropical medicine associated or infections, but uh, I also mentioned about some non-infectious disease. So for the infections category, there are vaccine preventable and non-vaccine preventable. For the risk, there are, there are two groups of risks. First is the primary risk when you give when you get the risk of infection disease for the first time. For and the cumulative risk is increased risk when you travel to the same place again and adding your primary risk double or triple when you come to the place again. For the cumulative risk assessment, it is a, like a long term exposure to potential risk for the future plans. So you talk the risk now, but you account for the next trip for the individual travelers. This can be uh, for frequent travelers or prolonged or uh, clients with uh, close contact to local population. So what is risk assessment? Risk assessment is the analysis of risk involved prior to action being taken. In risk assessment, we use scientific information and as an important data, basic data, to identify and quantitatively estimate health risk. So during protocol consultation, we do risk assessment as the primary or the important travel medicine service. In the travel consultation, it may, may not take only one visit. You may maybe through or three three travel visits to have the whole complete consultation and management. So in during the consultation, we educate, we motivate, and we equip travelers to respond to their health risks uh, that may be encountered during their trip. So during the pre-travel consultation, 
we on, uh, we do the risk assessment and then communicating the risk to the travelers. The purpose of risk assessment is to help uh, identify travelers at special risk. For example, those with medical condition, uh, pregnant women, children or older travelers, and those who may be undertaking travel which has special risks such as long-term long travelers, adventure travelers, or those undertaking a pilgrimage or going to a high-risk destination. How to do risk assessment? First, we base, we estimate baseline risk for the average travel. This is uh, absolute data, absolute risk data that can be found in literature. And then we consider specific, specific risk factors that may relevant to may relate to the individual travelers. Then we consider the role of intervention to reduce the risk anticipated during travel. But during the restraint strategy of risk reduction, we have to account individual risk perception and risk tolerance issue that may influence the traveler's interpretation of risk measure and whether they will accept or decline the intervention offered. So risk assessment includes an examination of the epidemiological evidence, relevant policies, clinical consideration, several responses, and also preferences. The, uh, the assessment of destination, we have to uh, ask specific details where the travel we go, which countries, which cities, or which areas, what kind of place, is it urban or suburban or rural? And how do they get there? Should they travel by airplane or by land or by uh, sea? Yeah, and then where uh, traveler stays? Is he or she stay in hotel, in apartment, homestay or a campsite? Yeah. And how long? Is it long term? Yeah. Is it less than two weeks or more than one month? And last is what the activity is there? Are they doing indoor activities or outdoor activities? So first is the knowledge of medical geography. We have to know about the emerging disease and outbreaks throughout the world. So this is why travel medicine is dynamic because this uh, emerging disease outbreaks are changing, changing day by day, hour by hours, and even minutes by minutes. So we have to be aware of the changing outbreaks in the world. The next step is the assessment of the host for the travelers. We should consider about the age, infant, young child, children, adolescent, young adults, elderly, and also gender, men, women include pregnant women, and of course those in between. Yeah, I don't know say I don't say who, but you know. And we assess also the current health condition. Are they generally healthy or whether they have a chronic illness, they consume medications or they have previous disease like hepatitis, hepatitis A in the past that can be uh, affect our recommendation for vaccines. We also need their vaccine history, what is their routine childhood and adult vaccinations and other travel recommended vaccines. Do they have allergy for, to food, drugs, and others? Yeah, because we are dealing with also with non-infectious disease, so we have to be aware there is a food allergy, for instance, peanut allergy or pollen allergy in uh, uh, special specific seasons in the destination, and then also we have to consider about the psychological uh, condition. Do they have anxiety or depression? And is there any medication for the problems? Do they have neurological disorders? And then uh, cardiovascular disorders, of course, it is also important to know. And if you are uh, done with the uh, information, with the uh, interview, then we move to physical examination for those who need. So it's uh, not like when we uh, exam patients, but this is for medical checkup or medical um, routine uh, tests that may 
uh, that we need to know before they go. So, so such as the cold cardiopulmonary fitness. If they uh, the travelers is an elderly, so we have to check is there any problems with the heart or uh, strokes, risk, risk of strokes, and um, probably have to be managed before they leave the country. And then we go to musculoskeletal assessment, consider risk of injury if they have to uh, use assisting device like a wheelchair or walker. Then we have we can have a special assessment like auditory assessment as spirometry for those who wants to go diving, for instance. But we don't need have we don't have to this do this. Uh, we can refer to other clinics or other specialized institution for doing this purpose. And after we make a risk assessment, we have to account for the travel's perspective of risk. And it is, depends on the existing knowledge of the risk by the travelers and what is their health belief and their tolerance of risk. Then they may have to uh, give their preference for risk management approach. So people usually uh, have tolerance to risk and taking risk may be an integral part of an adventure so maybe if we we need to prevent to avoid the, the risk but some people may take the risk as their uh, plan for having an adventure there for fun like this balloon holiday with a balloon this is also risky but it is enjoyable so first the selected population i choose is the corporate or business travelers corporate travelers uh, are common the characteristics of the corporate travelers are short notice for traveling and they may go to more isolated areas they have increased risk of illness and injury they have limited time for recovery and probably has jet lag and frequently have separation from the family so they may also have a psychological issue so and they also can work under stressful environment Business travel is have a different, slice different definition. It is a travel for the purpose of working, including corporate travel, field work, and attending meetings or conference. Business travels may also have different health seeking behavior due to employment requirements, as well as better access to medical care while overseas due to company insurance and medical assistance programs. So they are basically covered by the government, by the companies and they probably uh, have uh, time for health seeking a uh, health advice before going abroad so most of the business travelers were men this is from our study and has life had less time to departure um, but usually use a hotel as an accommodation more travel to urban and often travel multiple times a year so um, another uh, term is frequent business travelers. This is an uh, employee who meet at least one of the following, develop, develop following criteria. They travel within a region on flights of more than four hours, three or more times per month, or have long, long distance trips three or more times per year, or have less frequent trips, but to high risk destination. The second population is elderly travelers. So we see our uh, aging people now are increasing, but they see travel as a healthy lifestyle. So if they are healthy, healthy enough to travel, they will choose traveling as their uh, lifestyle. They go to remote place, they go uh, to country, are more remote countries, but some of them are more susceptible for to illness and injury, and also may have issues on mobility and or chronic condition that might be present and debilitating. So 
all these physical circumstances may prevent an elderly to enjoy life by traveling to many parts of the world. So the need are they need to uh, uh, have a, we have to check about medical conditions or disabilities. Every person should be prepared prior to the trip. Chronic illnesses should be managed and monitored during travel. Physical disability or limited mobility should be aided, and efforts may, may be made to make a person's dream come true, including a final wish. So if there is another uh, dying person who is to go somewhere, maybe we can do something to him or to her to make his final wish come true. Of course, elderly people need free travel medical checkups that include cardiovascular risk assessment. Then we have to modify the, medification, the medication to fit a different time zones. We need to discuss about their dietary habit and requirements. We have to give vaccinations for elderly people and other vaccines as well. We may need a dental check and eyeglasses. And also we have to maybe prescribe some medicine and medical certificate before going. Other issues regarding the elderly travel is that so we I have to I have mentioned earlier any other any special specific chronic disease like hypertension diabetes chronic renal failure that is uh, this uh, some uh, disease that should be discussed individually and then whether they are they have disability or not then insurance and also evacuation plan if something wrong happened. And the third population is infant children and young adult travelers. So children under two years are actually easy managed, easily managed because they are portable, meaning that they can uh, they will follow wherever you, the parents go. But when the children go older, challenges increase because they have their own, their own choices, their own preferences. So we have to manage the children with young children different uh, from the infants. So infants and children are often brought by the parents for holiday or other purpose such as working. Preparing and caring for children travelers more complex. It's more complex. Children generally have similar risks to their parents regarding infectious disease, but specific challenges exist related to their developmental stage and maturity. And routine vaccinations are usually still ongoing. So different strategy for vaccinations might be needed. So the risk of uh, infectious disease or non-infectious disease may, may be similar to their parents. Uh, and also there are increasing children travel for visiting friends and relatives. So they going with their parents to their home or their ancestors hometown. This is some uh, major infectious disease in children. This is in France, but uh, I think we can understand some of the terms here because um, this is uh, just uh, to give overview about what infectious disease around the world. For instance, like in Asia, we have dengue and malaria. We have a typhoid fever, uh, Japanese encephalitis. So, and in uh, for instance, in Africa, we have we still have malaria. Paludisme is malaria, like uh, and then uh, uh, yellow fever, fever zone, and bilharziasis, and any any many other infectious diseases that some of them are not preventable by vaccines. So increasing uh, rates of disease are. Uh, are uh, seen in the children age. Like FIFA higher than adults. For selected diagnosis, we have viral disease and skin disorders, and also FIFA. This uh, type of uh, FIFA may be malaria, mostly malaria, viral disease, and unspecified febrile illness. 
for diarrhea. Most of the etiology is acute bacterial diarrhea and chronic diarrhea, and also some of uh, unspecified gastroenteritis and acute parasitic diarrhea. For dermatologic disorder, <coughs> sorry. Actually, we have animal bites like and insect bites, and then uh, some uh, maybe cutaneous larva migrants and other etiology as well. The last part is use travelers. So for the young people uh, travel for different motivation. Maybe they want to experience other cultures. They want to build unique life experience and they want to benefit from formal and informal learning opportunities from other countries, including education or work abroad. Abroad, so youth in their quest for unique experiences are bringing new and offbeat locations. They often go to remote places that no other visitors have been there. Uh, I have to mention backpackers because a lot of backpackers are youth travelers. Backpackers literally means are uh, individuals who travel alone in a small group or unlimited budget, and usually stay in hostels, not a hotel or campsites or low-cost accommodation and carry their belonging in personal load carrying equipment or backpacks. Here are some uh, comparison of youth and uh, versus elderly travelers. You can see here but about backpacking as a travel mode. Backpacking is more dominant in 20 to 30 age group, while infections, illness also higher in young travelers compared to elderly people. This is also important to address. Injuries and drowning death is also high in young people, infant children and young adults to 24 years. So uh, not only for drowning, also accidents, car accidents, motor accidents. So they, are, they should be uh assess before going and should be discussed with the traveler so major health concern among students this is a uh, data from us you should talk, uh, talk about food and water hygiene we talk about psychological distress excessive sun exposure physical sexual assault motor vehicle accidents and so on and go to the uh, injuries and drowning. This is important. So what to tell the adolescent travelers in the left side, you can say have a great time. But we have to also give them routine up immunizations, appropriate travel vaccines, and don't forget to give medical kit. And also say to them, they have to learn lots. They have to uh, take precautions and safety uh, instruments like seat belts, helmets, maybe a life vest also when you go to by boat. Avoid potential body 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 fluid contact like tattooing or piercing, and then also sexual contact. And many others advice you should address for the young travelers. So for Indonesians, maybe you are already well informed about the loss of uh, West Java governor. So this is actually a nice river, but suddenly become the, um, uh, the water become too harsh and then, you know, missing the, the son of the governor has to uh, die in the river. And last, last uh, time celebration in a Taiwan Seoul, when many crowd, many uh, young people crowded in uh, small areas. Also, not only local people, they are also citizens from other countries. So they died in very young age. These are not. Uh, also, we cannot predict the such accident, but 
if you talk to you, you, you to young travelers, you should talk about many possible things that could happen because they have adventurous spirit, but they don't have enough uh, wisdom to consider which one that should not take or should not do during their trip. This is difficult, but because they also do not seek for health healthcare or medical consultation before traveling, they just go and jump to uh, uh, other countries and then uh, maybe take their risk, taking risk there without knowing what can be happen to their lives. So for take home messages and uh, recommendation, before going, we have you have to do pre-travel assessments and decide your recommendation as physician regarding general advice, vaccination, malaria prophylaxis, self-treatment, medical kit, insurance, and any other preventive measures. Then, after we do risk assessment, we can decide whether the risk is low, moderate, or high. If you risk, if the risk is low, maybe you should you only need some basic medical checkup or advice on personal hygiene. But if you have, uh, if if you found the risk assessment is high, maybe you should consider check up, complete vascular check up, cardiovascular check up, and discuss also evacuation plan if something wrong happen. In summary, for general pre travel assessment, the first step is we should know knowledge. We have to have knowledge in medical geography. Second step, we have to know the type of travelers, and then we identify their risk. We give interventions, and then they are ready to go. I think uh, these are all my presentation. Last take home message is uh, like that. The primary goals of travel medicine are to counsel travelers, raise awareness of risk, and to mitigate them through safe behaviors and preventative interventions. There are many types of travelers with different characteristics. And pre travel consultation may address risk assessment specific to the type of travelers. Risk assessment need basic knowledge and skill in travel medicine practice. And if you need, you should, you can make a referral to more specialist health center. Ah. Uh, Thank you for your uh, attention. I go back to Prof. Pontep. Thank you, Dr. Levina. And thank you for all the speaker. I think we have around 15 minutes for question. See in the chat box. Uh, any question from the, the, the meeting room? One minute left. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Any question? There is one question for me, Prof, in the Q and A column. I have, yeah. Doctor, how do we manage business travelers, mm -hmm. especially last minute travelers regarding travel vaccination and malaria prophylaxis? This is for ah. you. Ah, for Levina in the, yeah. in the Q &A. But I think uh, one, Dr. Wang Charapong is more experienced than me. <laughs> no. okay. uh, thank you. Uh, last minute. Business. Dr. I, uh, yeah. Last minute. Last minute vaccination and Maria Poparaxis. They didn't say where, where, yes. where this businessman go. Huh? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Man. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, good morning. Let me know the last minute travelers. Also ha uh, have a have a uh, limited time to do vaccinations, but uh, we we can give the vaccines whatever they need before they're going. Even if it's only one day or two days, just give them because they are they will go to other place again, and then we can uh, complete the vaccination after they come home or make another trip. And uh, for malaria, camoflaxis. I think it will be different from in uh, Indonesia and other countries because of limited um, choices. So for malaria in uh, Indonesia, I think you have only doxycycline tablets. Can you can give for one day or two days, and uh, uh, the duration 
for the, the long duration of the travel until they come home. But it's not for long term. It's not for long term travel. And malaria, malaria will be different in Thailand and international countries. So I don't, I cannot see about, I cannot answer for other type of chemoprophylaxis because the medical, the medicine is not available in Indonesia. So Dr. Arya, are you there? Dr. Wajprong, any comment from you? Okay, Please. thank you very much. In fact, I totally agree with Dr. Levina that, okay, even he come here on, on the first, or on the last minute, something like that, okay, we can give all the vaccine and that, that then we we have in order to prevent him or her for for some infection diseases. Okay, just some exception that at yellow fever. I think everyone know that. Okay, you need ten day before before yellow fever will be effective. That means if someone would like to go to Africa and come to see you, let's say today, and they need to leave tomorrow, theoretically you can keep it today. But the key is you need to ask him or her to postpone the trip. Because okay, legally or, or medically, the, the the yellow fever vaccine is not effective right now, and it's a serious disease, and it have some international law or something like that. So the yellow fever vaccine is just one, I think one one exception that okay, if you give it the last minute, ask them to ask him or her to to postpone the trip for ten days, otherwise he will be denied to go to in that country. For all other vaccine, I agree with Doctor Limina. Okay, you can give. But okay, just, just just some exception. Such as if you go to someone, some some airport that okay, they have the the regulation during the, the pandemic, <coughs> pandemic or, or something like that. If you get too many vaccines, something like that, the patient may have fever tomorrow when landed. Okay, you need to give them some 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 medical certificate that okay, you just give him ten or uh, five or six vaccines, something like that. So when he 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 or she has some fever tomorrow. Okay, he the doctor at the airport. We understand something like that. It is just one, just only a few exception that 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 we need to take care of the, in the last minute travelers for chemoprophylaxis. We we do have malalone and doxycycline, and and we can give it because doxycycline and and malalone, you can give it one or two day before into to that area in Africa. Let's say so. There's no problem. Okay, thank you very much. This is just I want to ask to add. Just add, I would like to clarify. If this businessman go for a meeting mm -hmm. in the city, in the a good setting, five star mm -hmm. hotel, you know, in the uh, capital, I know, but we have domestic and also rural yellow fever. But if he only in that hotel, can can we expedite for this for him to come to that country? Okay, this this is an issue of I think the, the medical issue or or the legal issue. So that is, medically we think that okay, if he let's say he go to let's say Rio de Janeiro in the big city and there's no malaria, no no no, no yellow fever in, in the hotel or in the airport, something like that. Medically, okay, we, we can say that okay, the risk is extremely low. But okay, legally, I say that legally, I mean the airline, I mean, mean, mean the airport control, whatsoever, they sometimes they do not care about rural or urban, something like that. Because in the real life, no one will, will, will be able to guarantee that okay, this guy landed in Brazil. They will stay only in Rio de Janeiro, only or not. Or they will travel to our Brazil. Something like that. This could be the decision at, at the airport. So I think if you would like to go to that way, you need to give the counseling to the traveler that you need some time. You need to 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 discuss and also maybe convince the, hmm. the the officer at, at the airport. Something like that. Yes. Yes. To be sure, I think that in my opinion, you have to immunize and got the yellow book. Mm -hmm. I, I I tell you exactly when I went to Brazil, I got the yellow book, but they haven't asked for that, you know, but to be sure, if you go to the endemic area, you need, because you they may check and you'll be, uh, get out of the country. You cannot get in. 
uh, a question that about the tattooing. You know, because you said it's a uh, it's a uh, dangerous. You you it's a uh, one of the uh, uh, the, the things that uh, travelers like to do. You know, especially when we can they come to Bangkok. Uh, to Thailand or to Pattaya, Phuket, you know, they do this tattooing uh, because it's quite famous. So do you, what do you think? Do you uh, forbid them or do you advise them? You mean tattooing? Tattooing. Okay. Quite famous. <laughs> there are many shops, you know, <laughs> in the tourist area. Yes, okay. As everyone knows that, okay, there's some list that the the, the tattooing shot something that they, they use answer like needle or or some sharp object to tattooing something like that this is one thing that we, we concern about the hepatitis b or so hiv infection something like that and even if even some some shops claim that okay this is single use or stir line okay <laughs> normally as a doctor we need to say that okay please avoid but okay if you would like to go that it as your intention okay take your own list and use your own common sense okay which shop that is sterile or which shop that is maybe maybe have better hygiene or sense or something like that take, take your own list yes so you recommend to choose the shop no no the the first one okay avoid but okay if he, he insists <laughs> yes absolutely okay. if he insists okay you go ahead and like that and you choose use your own common sense. <laughs> so as okay, as as everyone know that okay, we can say that you should not ride the bicycle, should not ride the motorcycle in Samui or in Phuket or, or in tourist area. This is dangerous. We can say and we must say something like that. But in the real life, many people would like to experience to to ride the bicycle or ride the motorcycle, and we cannot we we cannot we cannot force them not to do right. He, he or she has some freedom to do, but okay, this is your your, your own list. Yeah. yeah, this is a good point, you know, but because accident is the most, this is the highest uh, incident of death <laughs> among travelers, <laughs> incident and motor, uh, motor, especially uh, motorcycle is the most uh, cause of death, you know, because it's a left hand side, right hand side, <laughs> uh, driving, you see, and uh, cause difficult and sometimes they drink you see so uh, the most important is uh, advise them any question anymore well, when i i listen to uh, all of you i i seem like uh, uh, everybody when they travel they need to go to see a uh, uh, travel medicine specialist do you do you think so or, or some only some special group uh, Pekasi or Dr. Vajrapong that need to see uh, travel medicine doctor. Okay, maybe Dr. Levin. Yes. Sorry, Prof. Uh, 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 when I listen to all of you, it seems that you advise people yeah. before traveling, they should go to see a travel medicine specialist. Do you think so? Or, or do you think only some special group need to go and see for advice for a uh, people actually, yeah. consultant consultation? Yeah, actually, we are trying to uh, educate people because after the COVID nineteen pandemic, everybody are more aware about travel. Uh, about risk of infectious disease like COVID, so uh, we have uh, developed a network from for the physicians who give vaccinations. So these doctors usually give vaccination for uh, Indonesian going abroad, for, like for uh, for working or for stu uh, for studying abroad. But they don't give travel travel advice, and uh, we also have a. Uh, Huge number of people going for pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. So all of these uh, events is a, a good opportunity for us to promote travel medicine service. And then meanwhile, we should also uh, equip our doctors to learn about 
Tefal X Pfizer, they just not become a vaccine injector, but they can also do the pre-travel risk assessment and also give other uh, pre-travel advice. But I think they will need, and we have a best time here now to promote, and probably we also have opportunity opportunity to send doctors to my Hidal University next year to learn more about travel medicine practice. Okay, I think Dr. Lavina said a very really good point. That, okay, the, the point of, of the travel medicine, in fact, is to educate. I mean, okay, our traveler must be educated, not, not just the vaccine. Vaccine is not the only answer for travel medicine. So my, my, my idea is, okay, all travelers should be educated, or at least should be informed, or should be learned about health risk health assessment and how to reduce the risk okay by any means maybe by self-educate by website by whatsoever or my by, by gp or by travel medicine clean doctor or something like that so it, it's depend because okay if everyone i mean the public aware that okay i will go to the very high list i have some medical illness okay i might have some some risk so this is a good idea to consult travel medicine clinic but okay for on the other hand if you are young and, and you have no health problem, you go to the place that not, not so dangerous, so that, okay, go to Japan, go, go, go to some, somewhere that uh, you can just look at the website or educate yourself and, and to inform yourself that in that area, which, uh, which aspect of time that you should know or something like that. If you educate yourself, and that's, that's fine, no problem. But okay, on the other hand, if you have your grandma, grandpa, or something like that, go to Africa, okay, definitely. You will know that okay, in this area, in, in this situation, you should consult a travel medicine doctor or, or get some advice. And again, travel medicine is not just, 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 just a shot. It's, it's the whole length, as Dr. Levina said, that okay, this assessment, vaccine, information, education, insurance, whatsoever, it includes in the concept of travel medicine. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's time. Uh, uh, our speaker, uh, Professor Wachaprong, uh, uh, talk about principle and practice in travel medicine and give us a good example and also pictures of uh, uh, some important disease. But you may see some more diseases. You look at the <laughs> website, you see when you go to any country, look at the website, okay? Or look at Yellow Book of CDC and you can uh, know what disease you should be aware and what factor you should be aware. And Dr. Wasin uh, talk about the, uh, that uh, travel play an important role in transmitted the diseases. And uh, we should be aware, we should be well prepared also for the next emerging infection because of this transmission. Dr. Levina, uh, a preview all about the travel medicine, type of travels, list, list assessment, and then get the example of business travel, elderly, elderly travel and children travel. Uh, I would like to thank all the three speakers, Professor Vashar Pong, Professor Vashin, and Dr. Levina for a really nice and very fruitful uh, uh, information. Thank you very much for all the speakers and thank you very much for all the attendance. I we close this section. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much.